Steve Jewin, MMA Mania. Hey, AJ, you're on Steve from MMA Mania. Mercenary AJ hey, McKee. Hey, hey, how's it going? Fantastic. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to talk to you again, and you've got a great fight coming up here at Bellator 182 in just a couple of weeks. But first, I want to start by complimenting you on that spectacular finish of Dominic Mazzotta in your last fight. Hey, thanks. I know we had talked about that in a previous interview, how you were embracing the grind as your father had taught you, but that you were always looking to go out there and impress. And I think you reminded everybody that you can't just expect you to go out there and do the grind. You're going to go out there and just blow people's heads off. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, uh, it's an entertainment thing. This is what it is, a sport, you know. So uh, you got to make the people happy. The people make the organization happy, and the organization will make you happy. That's supply and demand. Well, is that what you're looking to do here with Blair Tugman? Because I know you've been chomping at the bit to get into title contention. Do you think another finish like that would get you that? I'm um, for sure, at least top five. You know, I go out there and get a nice finish. Um, for sure, they they I think uh, the fans will start wanting to see me uh, get those get those top fives. You know, and and get that title that title shot in the near future. How do you rate Blair as an opponent? He comes in on a three-fight win streak, but obviously he doesn't have your kind of record. Um, it's a fight, you know, so you can't look past anyone ever. Um, all it takes is one punch. But for me, I'm I'm not really worried about what he's do what he's gonna do. I'm kind of focused on things that I want to go out there and and I want to try and I want to focus on. All right. Well, what have you worked on since the last fight that you're looking to show us in this one? Just a little, uh, little ninjutsu and some, some crappy stand-up techniques. So, uh, tune in next week, August 25th, like TV, and don't miss it, and you'll see. <laughs> Literally don't miss it in your case, because a lot of your fights better than the first round, so that's no exaggeration. <laughs> Let me ask you, with uh, James Gallagher also campaigning the same way, saying he's undefeated, he deserves a title shot, it seems like there's some natural tension brewing between the two of you right now. <laughs> it's the big brother picking on the little brother. I'm just trying to get him to sign the contract, you know? He's, he's a little disrespectful, so uh, where I come up, where I grew up, you, you, you disrespect someone, you get disrespected right back. So I'm waiting for my opportunity to disrespect him on national television. Well, it looks Not like... Not verbally, but physically. Right, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but I was just saying it looks like he doesn't even have an opponent yet for later this year, so maybe you could fill your name in on that dot with a big win. I'll fill it in anywhere, anytime, any place. <laughs> just give me the contract and I'll sign it. Right, so... Who else other than him with this uh, whole rivalry, big brother, little brother thing that you got going on, who else do you see out there since you talked about that top five that you want to go out there and knock their heads off? Um, Pitbull, you know, he's, he's the man with that belt again, so that's, that's my goal. That's, anybody else is just a stepping stone on their way, on, on the way to getting that belt around my waist. Well, what about the former champion, Daniel Strauss? Do you consider him a stepping stone to that? Um, if that's the fight they offer, then that's the fight I take to get there. So he would, he would be a stepping stone as well. <laughs> that's that's one massive stone to step over, though, given he's a multiple-time former champion. Yes, sir, but he's no longer that man. That's that's one of my buddies, but hey, you know, this is it's business just as much as it is friendships. With this whole media circus that's going on right now, I believe there's even a conference call on a rival organization as we take place. How do you feel about this uh, same weekend of Bellator and the Mayweather fight going back to back? Um, I hope it brings more views. You know, I hope it, it since it is free and it is on Spike and it is the day before one of the big biggest fights of uh, our time right now. Um. Man, I hope it brings more views, you know, more views, more more people I get to entertain, and, and, and more shows for me to put on. Yeah, it certainly seems like people will be in a combat sports state of mind that whole weekend, so hopefully that's just uh, whetting their appetite and getting them ready for even more, and like you said, it's free, I'm like uh, $100 on pay-per-view, which is rather rich for my blood, at least. <laughs> 
For sure. The other thing that I always think about with this situation is, you know, with James Gallagher being in Conor McGregor's camp, it's like, this is going to be a little bit of a distraction for him trying to get ready for fights coming up like in November when all this stuff's going on with his teammate. Well, you know, Big Brother has to, uh, got to make sure Big Brother's focused. So, he's, uh, he's probably holding this water bottle for him and uh, making sure he's, He's nice and hydrated. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. But speaking of fully focused, how's everybody at the body shop doing? I know, I know you got other teammates that are fighting soon, too. Man, Slice, Slice is looking good. He's getting his hands right. Um, he had a great fight his last fight. Joey Davis, he's been in there putting in that work. Um, he, he'll be fighting uh, next weekend as well with me. So check him out on the prelims, and uh, Aaron Pico's in there as well. So he's he's in there putting in that work, man. No, I, I, I haven't met anyone who works as hard as me and him. He, that that boy works his ass off. So uh, we look forward to having him come back. And uh, that Bellator takeover is real, man. It's 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 here, and, and Body Shop's doing it full effect. How surprised were both you and he at what happened at Bellator 180? Because he, the hype was all on him for that, and it just seemed to go south in a real hurry. Um, it's a fight, you know, so so things happen. Like I said, it only takes one punch, and uh, and and that's all she wrote. So um, he he fell, you know, he fell. Now he has nowhere else to go but back up. So. He's uh he's determined, man. He's he's not letting it get to his head, and he's working hard just like he usually does. And it, it, it's gonna be a he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with as soon as as soon as he steps back in that cage. Now, as somebody who's undefeated, do you believe there's any merit to the philosophy that getting a loss out of the way early makes you a better fighter, or do you think that's obviously BS considering you're rolling and getting better with every fight? Um. For me, I fear losing. Um, I, when I'm in practice, I fear the thought of losing. So that's what drives me in practice. But when I step in that cage, it's, it's something different, you know? The thought of losing doesn't even come to my mind. The thought of, of inflicting pain and hurting that person standing across from me is, is what I'm sitting there thinking about. Now, with the development of this featherweight division, it seems like right now the homegrown stars are shining at the top, but we see other divisions in Bellator where it's like welterweight and light heavyweight and heavyweight that a lot of people are coming over and trying to make their name in Bellator. So how would you feel if we saw that same influx of featherweight stars into Bellator from other organizations? Run up or shut up. They got a uh, sign that contract. Come to my house, you're going to get the round, you, you know, it's a new property to you. But for me, for me, I know every angle and aspect of this house, so I got the advantage. Right. Yeah. Nobody knows the Bellator cage quite like you do. That's your career right there. So, not only that, but I think a lot of people who think they might come in and dominate from another organization probably don't realize that the featherweight class is as competitive as it gets in or outside of Bellator. It's like top notch, top to bottom. 145s and 170, I feel like, are the most two stack weight classes there are. You get no argument from me on that. So, we've talked about former champions, current champions, but let's go back to Pitbull for a second. Now, let's say this win over Tugman vaults you to the head of the line. What would be your strategy going in there with a guy who's been champion multiple times and is the champ right now? Um, make him get to me, you know, he's, he's a shorter, smaller fighter. He's a power striker. Um, I don't think he's planning, he's never really planned on taking anyone down. So for him to keep the fight on the feet, um, I'm much longer than him. So, um, keeping him at bay, making him come to me and, and there's so many things you can do in that fight. You know, you can hit angles, you can, it's a fight, you know, you just, you got to get in there and fill it out and, and see how it goes from there. Do you find it surprising at all that the Pitbull brothers rely so much on their hands when they've obviously got that jujitsu skill set and yet they choose to stand up in almost every fight? Um, no, because it's, it's entertainment just as much as it is uh, a business, you know. So, um, for me, I, I have great jujitsu as well, but 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to go out there and take someone down just so I can do jiu jitsu. I'm going to, I'm going to try to put on a show and, and give the fans what they want. That's a, a good flashy knockout. We used to be like sent those guys there and just choke them out and then settle for basics. I understand that philosophy, but at the same time, I think submissions are underrated as an explosive finish. If you jump on a guy's back and sink in a rear naked choke and tap him out in a matter of seconds, that's an explosive, exciting finish, too. It is. Now, if you go out there and kick him in the face and knock him out cold unconscious, <laughs> which one are you going to take, you know? Yeah, once again, I can't argue with you on that point, so I'll take that correction and roll with it, and I'll say that we're looking for that <laughs> that kind of a finish with Blair Tugman. If you can get that head kick knockout, that'll be the preferable of the two. Always, always. So, let's get some plugs in, let's get some social media mentions in, let's get in sponsors, anything that you want to throw out there, and I'll have one or two more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, first off, I gotta give a huge thanks to you, um, for having me. I gotta give a shout out to the man upstairs. No, this would be possible without him. Um, I gotta give a huge shout out and thanks to my dad. You know, he's a great coach, mentor, father, brother, and all that in one. So, um, huge shout out and props to him. I gotta give a shout out to my sponsors, Affliction, TC1, Dr. Dossman, Ed White, Bad Boy. And anyone else I uh, miss out there, like Fish, anybody else, um, who knows? And you, of course, man. Thanks, thanks for having me, man. No problem. And like I said, just one or two more and we're wrapping it up. But I also want to mention at AJ McKee Jr. on Twitter so everybody can follow the mercenary. But let me get your hot takes on a couple of quick news items as we wrap up. Josh Thompson lost his appeal to get his fight with Patricky Ferry overturned, but they ruled that there was actually a headbutt in the fight and they're putting a note on his record. As a fighter, what do you think of that having like an asterisk next year of official record? Did he, did, so was his win um, taken away? No, they, they still gave the win to Patricky, but they're putting a note in the record, which to me doesn't make any sense. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he can't take his win, so he shouldn't give him a rat. Right, it, it's just... it they does not take that win from him. Right. That, that's all that matters, Sam. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me either, so why even put a note in there at all? But the other one I want to ask you about was it looks like Frank Mir is on his way into Bellator, so any thoughts on that? I'm nice. I I used to watch my dad train, train with Frank, Frank Mir back in the day, back in Vegas, so uh, it'd be nice to see him get him in and see, see how he's doing. Looks like we won't see him fight till April 2018, so that's a little bit of a wait, but we don't have to wait because we're going to get to see you on August 25th in Verona, New York. So, AJ, thank you as always for the time. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.